I'll enjoin you to please go around. We have brains and hammers, adron bombs, Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, Locust Group, Strongmass Residence, Lagos State Real Estate Regulatory Authority, Lasrera, and a host of all other exhibitioners who are here today um, to show us different products and properties that they have for our unique pleasure. So please, for her, they've joined us from the Lagos State Ministry of Health. Just please a round of applause for all our sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pre-Invest. It's my pleasure this morning to welcome all of you uh, to our second property investment program. So I will go through the protocols quickly, and I will not stand in your way. Honorable Commissioner for Housing, um, Honorable Maruf Akinde Rufatai, Special Assistant to Lagos State Government on Housing, Mrs. Tuke Benson Awoyinka, Distinguished CEOs and Partners, Managing Directors, Regulatory Bodies and Associations, Owners of Properties, Members of the Press, Ladies and Gentlemen, and of course, Realtors. You're all welcome. It's my pleasure to welcome you all today to Business Day's Property Investment and Property Investment Conference 2023. So it is with great pleasure that I deliver this keynote address at this year's Business Day Print Invest Conference, organized by Business Day Media Limited with the theme, Ready or Not to Invest, Navigating the New Prospects in Real Estate. This theme, which highlights the new prospects in real estate, can, can be examined with three different perspectives, which include real estate stakeholders, investors, and government. In Nigeria, real estate remains one major area of investment that attracts local and foreign investors. But despite the boom in the sector, it was observed that the real estate investment has not really contributed to the GDP of the nation's economy. Although a series of factors can be attributed as a root cause of this development, it is however a fact that investments in real estate sector are not properly implemented and the key players in the industry are yet to embrace international best practices, one of which is being certified by their host states like it is done in developed countries. We need more investors to come in to bridge the gap. So one of the things that would limit an investor from coming to uh, invest in real estate space in Nigeria. Number one, insecurity. Uh, we, we had a session with someone that wanted to invest. Um, she's based in Canada. And um, from our conversation, you would, from the way she spoke, you really think that we, we don't work freely in Nigeria. She was making it sound as if everywhere you turn to, um, someone's going to kidnap you, they are going to rob you, as though we can't just sit like this. And it's because of the impression they've been given, and you can't blame them. Everybody, you turn on the TV, there is someone that's been kidnapped, there is robbery everywhere. So insecurity is one of the major reasons why um, investors will not come in. Second, which is linked to the first one, which is unrest. There is a region in this country, whether it is rumor, whether it is um, it has substance, um, it leaves uh, much to be desired. Uh, on a particular day of the week, you cannot come out. And they said that um, if you do try it and you come out, whatever you face, the government is not going to save you. And there is a government in place. So a certain set of people made up their own rules. And you will be shocked that, I mean, particularly they say on Mondays, you don't know market, no banks, no schools, nothing. As though there is a pseudo um, government in place. So um, insecurity, unrest. I must know that the theme of this year's conference, which is navigating the new prospects in the real estate, is a very apt one. The world is changing in a dynamic manner, with factors such as population explosion and migration, new innovations in technology, and climate change play major roles in determining trends and developments. Whether we like it or not, these factors will definitely shape our world over the next five years. At the level of governance, they will impact on our policy decisions and influence allocation of resources. 
at the investors level, these issues will impact the absolute and relative appeal of investment categories. Things will not remain the same as the interplay of these forces become more intense. I'm sure that we all agree with that. Things are changing. Uh, facility management is all about managing the beauty environment. All the professionals in the beauty environment build because of us. We represent the end users. And that entire uh, profession that manages the end user experience, that provides maintainability, sustainability, operational, you know, uh, running for the life cycle of the beauty environment is where we sit in facility management. And so for Max Gold and for our association, the AFMPN is all focused about is all focused on the end user's experience. What happens in most uh, property uh, real estate investment discussions are transactional. What happens to the investor side? Who wants to buy? Why do you want to buy? Where should you build? You know, high end, low end, medium end. But very little focus is paid to what exactly happens to the end users. So everything from what we're going to talk about now, uh, you know, issues of flooding and other environmental issues, uh, issues of energy, issues of long-term viability of these dwellings and these workspaces that we're creating are where we really focus on. So that's basically uh, where we're participating in a conference like this. With our communities, we give back to them. We construct roads, accessibility, we give them green through our horticulture department. We have a lot of greens, green areas. Aside from that, we also put about some other infrastructures like churches, mosques, hospitals. We have some strategic partnership. So most times when we are thinking of affordable, it's mass. It's more like a city. We don't build estates, it's city. And if you have a city, you have to make sure you have everything inside the city from shops, supermarkets, clinics, schools, and that's what we've done. We've started that on a smaller note in our other estate, but in our affordable bungalow city, it's there. We've made provisions for it. We've had um, organizations we are talking to that are planning to move in to set up shop so that you can have your affordability house or your affordable house and still enjoy other services without leaving your community. Okay, talking about um, housing imbalance and uh, the regulatory impropriety. Um, Nigeria has a case study and we streamline to legal stage and to real, as it affects the real estate. Um, I am sure, maybe I should just ask this question to start. Is there anybody here who wouldn't like to have a home to his or her name? Anybody? There is none. So that shows you that um, the need for housing is a very essential need. And um, being very essential, everybody would love to have it. And it is not for the sake of luxury, but because it is very important. It's, it's a need. Now, so for me, I think that we have to look at a lot of things when it comes to development, affordable housing, and all. For me, I think that we should not be, for Lagos, the word affordable is relative. And if we are looking at Lagos, I'm not sure you can really have affordable housing, so to speak. Because we need to ask the question, what is the minimum wage? It's just 30,000 Naira or so. So, what is an average person in Nigeria when you are done with school? How much are you earning? Maybe 150,000 or 200,000. If you have to save that across the year, how much is the whole money? So, can you, where can you get a house or where can you buy something? Not even a land. So, when you look at it. So, the word affordable is very, very relative. Also, when you look at the reason why I was shaking my head is because, see, for us, for developers, it's not advisable that you take investment in dollars i'll tell you why for example if somebody is giving you an investment let's say one million dollar uh, investment one of investment and you took that in let's say you took that in 2020 and dollar at that time was 470 black market when we are now talking about 750 as we speak 
there is no level of this, there is no mathematics that you can do, you can't pay that money, you are going to be in debt. So if I'm to advise any developer, I would say when you're approaching your investor, make sure that they convert into our local currency. Take it in Naira. Um, simple. I, when you say winning, I made a comment during the first session. And that comment was to the fact that, look, way back in the 90s, we had a mortgage system. And that was probably what led to the Federal Mortgage Bank. But along the line, the whole system collapsed. Just like you had insurance business, insurance sector that was working. At that time, everybody would insure their property, would insure their vehicle. But at a point in time, it became more like, why do I need to insure my vehicle? And the whole insurance industry almost collapsed. Now what led to the collapse of the mortgage industry? In 1991, uh, the government at that time, that was IDB, tried to resuscitate the mortgage system. And that was what led to National Housing Fund. Unfortunately, they did not get implementation right. The National Housing Fund was supposed to fund the primary mortgage institutions that were licensed there. But rather, the government went ahead and licensed primary mortgage institutions. Whereas the sum of funding, because mortgages are supposed to be long-term funding, and like we all say in this business, you don't use short-term funds to finance long-term investment, which real estate is. Now, most of the people who got licensed for primary mortgage institutions then were those who couldn't get licenses for commercial or much banks. So when they set up their primary mortgage institutions, they were still doing business as if they were finance houses, short-term. There was nothing to finance real estate. So invariably, of course, that was why a lot of people lost interest. Because let me be honest with you, there is no way under the current circumstance that anybody can take a mortgage and ever pay back. At 25%, in other parts of the world, it has to be single digits. So if it's the moment it goes double digits, you are in trouble of never being able to pay that. Simple terms, the interest rate in the country is too high. We cannot sell mortgages at double digit, high end double digit interest rates. 20% 20, 20 and above is still what the average mortgage lender, should, the little, the few that exist, will see in, in the uh, financial services. Uh, the central bank need a monetary policy that drives interest rates down to single digits. And even then, single digits still interest rate can still make purchasing homes prohibitive because it is a direct relationship with um, average income or household income, however we choose to dissect it, which unfortunately in this country is still too low. Now, we need income growth so that people wages can increase and if your wages increase, your affordability of certain home prices can also increase. Of course, we, we discussed other elements that are non-mortgage related, but as far as the financial market goes for financing a home, if a home is one naira and you earn zero naira, you cannot afford that home anyways. So the, the, the point is interest rates are too high and uh, also based on what the Federal Mortgage Bank and the National Housing Fund are willing to finance being 15 million naira, and I understand that is a targeted approach to uh, address affordable housing. Um, it needs to go deeper. Otherwise, the mortgage market itself cannot develop because the people that would be able to afford mortgages, even at 15 million naira, are still more the medium to high end income earners. As we come to the end of this real estate conference, I would like to express my gratitude to all the speakers, attendees, and organizers for making this event a success. It has been an informative and thought-provoking experience, and I hope that everyone has gained valuable insights into the new prospects of real estate. The real estate industry is constantly evolving 
and with technological advancements and changing demographics, there are new opportunities and challenges that we must embrace. As we move forward, let us keep an open mind, collaborate, and innovate to shape the future of real estate in the country. We are thanking our headline sponsors, Brands and Hammers, our associate sponsors, Adron Homes, our industry partners, Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, and all other partners at this year's event. Thank you once again for your participation, and I look forward to seeing you all in future events. Those were the words of Frank Ibogun, and I want to...